All right. You should see a full screen of Welcome to Wisconsin, the Badger State. Yes. And since I'm, I, I can't blame it on my roots. I just don't know how to pronounce a bunch of these towns' names. So I'll just slaughter them and then y'all can say, well, he's, he's not even close. But uh, there's a lot of, of names that certainly sort of like come to Texas and you probably mispronounce Will Dorada or, or Kynosa and some of ours that, that's not quite the way they look. So. Uh, Wisconsin, Billy, so I can correct you if you, if you need it. All right. Well, we're, we're going to start over here from Michigan, and we're going to get on uh, a ferry called the Badger, and we're going to cross over here to Manawak, and uh, that's where we're going to start and go in to Door County. And it's certainly a, a place you ought to mark on your list of places to go see and do, because I really enjoyed our time on, on the Door County deal. The, the Badger that was a very, very large ferry and capable of hauling some impressive loads. And uh, you could go up, have a meal in the cafeteria. You go shopping at, on all sorts of places on the thing. And uh, it, it's very, very large. But while we were crossing over, we met this group of people and they were involved with the, the uh, cross country chase. And they had started out at Sault Ste. Marie. So they had to cross over to get to to Wisconsin, so they was on the ferry. They hadn't been racing very long because they started on September the 5th, and this is in 2019. And they uh, ride motorcycles somewhere between 1930 and 1948 is when the, when the motorcycles were built. So it's an antique motorcycle race, and they're racing all the way down to Key West, Florida. And oh my gosh! So it, it's a little over twenty five hundred miles, and, and uh, it was great to see these old bikes. And these guys have to be their own mechanics, so if the bike breaks down, they have to be able to fix it themselves. And so it makes for an interesting uh, uh, race. And say, Billy, how how long was that ferry trip from Michigan? But, about two hours. Two, three. two yeah. hours. Okay. Yeah, maybe three. Maybe three, but it was it was in that time frame. Okay. And when you pull the pull up to to unload, this is the lighthouse that's there, and I had seen this lighthouse before, but not looking this this very calm. I actually pulled this off the web, but they have some fierce weather there. And so uh, it can get a little rough, but we weren't there to, to see the rough. And I wouldn't want to have been crossing that in a ferry anyway with it that rough. But it's, it's an impressive one. Wow. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to work up to, to two rivers to another lighthouse. We're going to work up to another lighthouse. Uh, for those of you that like lighthouses, Wisconsin, Michigan, both great places to go and, and check out the, the many lighthouses that, that's there to look at. Uh, when we went through, uh, and again, I'll show you the word and you can figure out the pronunciation, but this is the biggest grandfather clock I'd ever seen. So I had to check it out and it was the world's largest at nearly 36 feet tall. And it's right there on the side of the road. So I, I mean, I had to stop back up and go take a picture of it. And it'd been there for five years. It was re, rebuilt in 2014. And uh, it's, it's just pretty impressive. Uh, you can go up to Almaga and if you happen to catch it at a nice sunset, you can get a really nice picture of, of the lighthouse at sunset and uh, enjoy seeing all of these in a different take. 
when you get to Sturgeon Bay, there's two lighthouses at Sturgeon Bay. One of them's on the Coast Guard setup that's there. These people are protecting you all over the Great Lakes or a good portion of it. And then there's uh, another uh, lighthouse right there, uh, not too far out of town. And so uh, I'll, I'll show you a few more lighthouses and then we'll get on to something else. But we're going to go on up and we're going to make a loop around here back to Sister Bay, but I'll show you a lighthouse and then come back to Sister Bay. And uh, the, the, this particular one is uh, uh, just sort of out on the point and it's, it's very attractive uh, to, to look at, at this particular one. I was trying to remember it's the Eagle, uh, Eagle Nest. I was trying to remember the name of it, but I apologize for not having that just right where I could grab it. But it's a very beautiful look across the lake there. And then the other thing is the Door County shoreline. And oh, you can you can spend quite a bit bit of time and taking pictures trying to get the shoreline pictures there. And uh, very, very attractive. Take a canoe, get out on the lake, just enjoy a stop and a picnic and uh, enjoy the day. For those of you that know, have been to Al Johnson's deal there at Sister Bay, uh, you, you understand the goats. Uh, his is Swedish food, Norwegian, and, and uh, it's a, most people know it as pancake house. But they had a big protest one time, and I'm going to make some fun of this, because of the goats on the roof. They were griping because of these poor goats having to be exposed oh, to the sure. sunshine and they might fall off the roof. I was like, yeah, the same group probably wants us to put safety nettings up on the side of mountains. I don't know. I just like, but uh, uh, my, my joke to them is, well, these are many generations of genetics in these goats and they actually have shorter legs on one side so they can stand level. <laughs> and I picked on them for what they're worth. <laughs> this is a little ways out of Sister Bay, and it's the windiest road I have ever seen. And for a motorcycle person, this would be a lot of fun. I was in the Prius, and I had such a good time. I did this three times. I, I went down and come back, did it again. I went back the next day and did it again because I just had a lot of fun on this road. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know what a fish boil is, I'll try to give you a little flavor of it. But this particular one has served some uh, cod, I believe it was, Michigan whitefish. And uh, anyway, whenever... Uh, they get it up and boiling with all the all the other things that's mixed into this pot. Then they set the fire going big time. And anyway, you've seen these. You can find a fish bowl if you're looking for a fish bowl. You can find a fish bowl. Seems like everybody has one. And you can go out there and enjoy some really good fish. It, it, and if that's not your thing, then you can find a bonfire along the shoreline and, and go enjoy that with a lot of people and uh, just have a great time uh, along the lake. We did make it to, to this uh, Luton Box Orchard Country place and we bought a case or two of this chopped jer cherry jam. It was really tasty and uh, brought it home, gave it out as Christmas gifts, and it was very good. The reason we spent so much time up there is we was at a timeshare right there where that X is marked, and we had a, a great time with the, those people. Uh, we were only a short distance from Stone's Throw Winery, and I enjoyed this and, from a couple of things. They, they were hosting a wedding there, and I'm sorry, I'm going to get off on a, uh, on a track here that has nothing to do with traveling. But anyway, the, the vineyard's very pretty. But check this out. 
this is this is what every outdoor wedding venue should have. You have a travel trailer here, men's restroom, you enter here, exit here, women enter here, exit here. You got air conditioning, skylights, you got basins with warm water, uh, the portable generators on the far side. And I said, hey, I don't know who thought of this, but that's great. That's that's an opportunity to make a little money here. <laughs> We also went over to Greenleaf Landscaping and Garden, and they make lots of yard art, but this is some pretty cool bird houses. If you pull down on the end here and drop it down, you can clear out the old bird house, close it back up, and they have them as tall, medium, and small. But uh, you, you, I stand 6'3", and you can see that's pretty tall, and even the Short. So what kind of bird is that for? Any kind that wants to claim it. Oh, it's right. Yeah. So it's <laughs> They're really cool. Looking. Yeah, they were cool and they had lots of yard art. I'm I'm always grateful that we're in the Prius because if I was in the pickup, I'm sure there would be this tendency to want to load it up with something to bring home. <laughs> and it, it was it's pretty cool. Then we went down to Green Bay, and I'm going to show you some weird things, but it's all right. Only thing we went to see in Green Bay, as you know, is Lambeau Stadium, home of Green Bay Packers. And we enjoyed our tour immensely. We had a great time there. We got to walk the parameter of the field. We didn't get to get on it like we did at Nebraska, but uh, very, very nice. And these, these uh, booths up here uh, are, are not overpriced. And actually, the average Joe could probably have one. And the thing we found fascinating about it is when the game starts, the windows drop. And that way it, they can hear the noise and participate in the noise. The only thing that keeps them from freezing is they have some very powerful heaters in those things. Now, here, here are some numbers that's pretty impressive. How many owners are there of the Green Bay Packers? There's 361,000 owners because citizens own the Green Bay Packers and they own 5 million shares and uh, makes them quite unique and uh, it's it was it's good our two tour guides both owned one share <laughs> and i was like well, that's great everybody can claim they own a professional football team now you're talking about a place to eat okay right across the street is culver's and that's the home of butter burgers and what they do wisconsin's known for their butter and they take a big old pad of butter, I don't know what weight it is, and they just let it melt into the hamburger uh, meat and give it a little extra juice. And uh, it, I have to admit, it's very tasty. And uh, they have tried for years to buy that drive-in and it's not for sale. They, they make good money right there next to the state. I had to go change my oil at the Toyota dealership. And when I got there, I've never seen this before. And I was taking picture after picture of these cars. And this guy come up and started talking with me. And he is an owner. And every one of these cars was his. And they're all in top-notch shape, absolutely pristine, nothing wrong inside out very very nice vehicles and i just had a great time visiting with him and about his reconditioning of these cars and i said do you go to parades and he said well i used to and i lost interest in that and i was like man i would love to be in a parade with one of them so you just went to get an oil change you had no idea the collection no, was there. I had no idea. 
And, then and what's this, the name of the place again? It was the Toyota dealership in Greenville. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. And so <laughs> when I asked him about the plane and he said it was completely redone, the engine rebuilt right before he hung it. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, okay. So <laughs> inside this establishment, he has an area that's got black and white checkered tile. It's the Coca-Cola theme. It's got the ice cream fountain, soda fountain. And I just bragged on him big time, right to his face. I said, this is the coolest dealership I've ever been in. It'd be cool for anywhere. So <laughs> there are a few covered bridges in Wisconsin, nothing like Vermont. They are pretty, but you know, there's only like eight. And I think I got three of them and it's, uh, this one calls the last covered bridge, but it's it's just show you you can find covered bridges here also. So you can add to your photo collection from a number of standpoints. We did get some beautiful sunsets Ooh. across the lake, and uh, I think I have one picture where my wife's taking the back of my head taking this picture. So I was like, well, that sort of proves I was there, but it was sort of a strange picture. <laughs> and then uh, got to go to the state capitol, make a quick stop. You know how that is. Take a picture of the front, take a picture of the back. I've been there. Goodbye. I mean, I, I, don't, I didn't spend a whole lot of time at the state capitol. Now, this is spring green. You can mark it as a place to go, have a, have a couple of places that not stay there at least because there, there's two things that you want to go see at Spring Green. You want to go see the Frank Lloyd Wright house and everybody knows he loves Japanese art and everything. And when you look around that, uh, I told Lanny, I said, this guy's got to be short. This is, these, the ceiling is six foot four and the doors are six foot two. And so I was constantly cracking my head on something. And I finally looked it up. Frank Lloyd Wright was five foot seven. And he said, anybody taller than that's just a waste. And I'm not wasting my architectural skills designing for a tall person. And I was like, okay, well, I believe it. But he did like his, his angles. And this is just the property. It's beautiful property out there. This is just a walking deal. You can just walk out, look at the, the, the area that's around there. And, uh, this is just part of the grounds that, that's there to, to be seen. And it, it's gorgeous property. And uh, the uh, rectangles, they like big rectangles, little rectangles, smaller rectangles. Anybody has been a Frank Lloyd Wright deal knows exactly what I'm talking about. He just liked rectangles and, and angles, angles, and more angles. So not picking on him. You could go to the shop, get you a stained glass that reflected Frank Lloyd Wright. You could buy, uh, you can see in the brickwork there at the house, the same thing. And uh, his Japanese art that that's there on the property to look at. It's, uh, it just goes along with his personality. But uh, inside, outside, it completely reflects him. And then if you wanted to get some uh, canvas there at the, the center, you could get it. And uh, it just reflective of, of what we we're saying about the man. Did he now, ever live there or was it a commission? He spent, no, it was his. And he oh, spent, uh, uh, yeah, he spent time there. His second wife was actually killed there. Oh. And and uh, burnt the guy that killed her burnt the place to the ground, and he had to rebuild it. Oh. And anyway, he sort of went crazy to say the least. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, yeah. 
Now, just down the road, not very far, there's a place there that's called House on the Rock. And to, to uh, say that Alex Jordan was a little different is an understatement. And these pots are over six feet tall. Some of them are tall as eight feet tall. And uh, he, lo he loved Japanese art. His beautiful uh, water gardens are, were absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is only a small taste of what you're going to see there. Uh, and when I start showing you some of the things this guy collected, I'm not even touching on the deal. He started building this in 1945. It's finally open to the public in 1959. And all it did was collect more stuff and stuff more stuff into every corner and build more buildings. And you, you were just amazed at his collection so i'm i'm not going to do it justice this is uh infinity point i believe is the correct name of this and lanny and i probably went two-thirds of the way and we the thing was just given to our weight and i was like i don't think i need to go any farther <laughs> and we turned around and came right back and what and is this can, called? This is a house on the rock. And, and is it also in Spring Green? It is. About seven miles from the Frank Lloyd Wright home. Okay. And you can see that that infinite, infinity point is above the trees. So you're pretty high off the ground. Yeah. And uh, the guy collected uh, carousel characters. And he liked anything unique. And he had a, he didn't have just one, but he had a collection like you can't, couldn't hardly believe the collection that he had. He has uh, just one interesting carousel after another. He did like circus stuff and he collected a lot of circus stuff. But his, he had like all of these carousel horses. He has the world's largest indoor carousel that has 269 animals on it and none of them are horses. And I mean, that's, that's just amazing. He had 20,000 lights, 182 chandeliers. And that's just on that one object right there which is is the carousel and it's it's extremely large oh my goodness and uh, lions and bears and everything else is chinese art beautiful is uh he got all these old cameras the face masks sort of like you would expect to see at new orleans and mardi gras uh the thing I found amazing was the amount of, of musical instruments that played by air. And so it would, uh, uh, this is like a calliope and he had a bunch of these calliopes. And he would, they, whenever you paid your fee to come in, they gave you a handful of coins so you could play the calliopes as you went through. <coughs> Very, <laughs> so Billy Lammy just put up a little note that she kind of thought he was a hoarder. Which <laughs> so the difference between a collector and a hoarder, I guess, is if you have the space to display it. Uh, you know? yes. I was saying there, but he had a lot, a lot of musical instruments that basically counted on air. And he had friends that would come and join him on weekends to just rebuild these things and so he has a large collection of of these and then i told you he liked to collect circus items if you look in the background here you see more of those in the backgrounds and he had circus tents and every kind of miniature illustration and everything on display and 
just an amazing amount of stuff. He liked miniatures. This is up close to one of the miniatures. And if you look at it, you can see there's a miniature coffee grinder, a miniature stove, miniature onions, potatoes. The guy collected lots of oddities, each in a of strange barrels and drinking paraphernalia. He, he had a, a, a number of them. <laughs> well, I hope Ron in Australia is taking special note of this. Looks like a place he would thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> well, th this one is uh, <coughs> not too far from there is the circus museum. And undoubtedly this guy bought anything that they didn't want because he, he had wheels and, and all sorts of things. It, it's, it's, it's hard for me to get across what all he did. Even these bears that he collected, he had, I don't know what, two or 300. I mean, he had oh, the yeah. doggone collection of yeah. bears yeah. that you ever saw. And uh, this is just one of many oh, things. And then he collected powder-based guns, and he had a large, large room of these and, and uh, all, all on display. And you had to wonder, what in the world? What am I going to find around the next corner? And then we'd get in to where he'd see, you'd see his show off of his Japanese collection. And so, some of those curtains were very beautiful in, in, in dividing rooms with. and. That's the only 35 Packard I'd ever seen, and, and he, it's pretty nice. And that's what the that's why the uh, Alex Jordan drove around, and that was his main car. And uh, Lanny, I'll tell you, I didn't hardly do justice to the place. Just look it up sometime because it, it's absolutely staggering what all is in here. Do not try to do both in the same day. <coughs> <coughs> it'll take you five six hours to go through house on the rock and um, if you push yourself you, you probably would finally go i give up i'm leaving because it, it's just so much there <laughs> now we went to west wisconsin dales and I had that as my background a while ago, and somebody goes, where are you at? I said, I'm at Wisconsin <laughs> Dells. And if you look over here at the far left at the bottom, that's the roller coaster deal that goes up. I'm at the Mount Olympus Water Park, and it's not the biggest one in Wisconsin Dells. There's 20 plus water parks there, and the largest one is Noah's Ark. It's an outdoor park. It's over 70 acres in size. And the, the Karahara uh, Indoor Park is the largest that, that's there. And uh, the, uh, the 20 water parks makes this town, this town known as the water park capital of the world. Now you want another place to eat. Any place that has a setup like this out front, you're going to have to just stop and check it out because. <laughs> we, we saw these driving all over town. Then I see six of them in the parking lot. I'm going to have to stop. That's just too, too much to pass up. And, uh, this is the Wisconsin Dells. It's right in the edge of town. You can take a boat trip and, and it, just some very, very beautiful structures from the erosion that, that uh, the water has done. And uh, yeah, Lanny says it's not there yet, but it should get there. There you go. And uh, anyway, you can go by boat, uh, go by it. You know, the duck, uh, all of them will take you out and let you look at some beautiful uh, rock structures. Giving you a little time to, to see uh, 
see the pictures there, then I'll move on to another way. This is, I'm sorry, I'm back up here. My, I had to get up to my title. This is the Devil's Lake State Park, and this is the Devil's Door. Right there is reference. So another place to go hiking. Now, we did go to the Lost Canyon and go on a horseback ride. And these horses, well, well, we'll let you see that. And these horses actually get you through these narrow, narrow canyons. But do not put your fingers outside the wagon because these sideboards bounce off the rocks. And you, you could certainly smash your finger pretty bad. Uh, on that. So it, it's a, the Lost Canyon was, was pretty neat to go through. And uh, the algae formations, all of them it, it is, it, to think we wasn't four miles from town was amazing. Because you'd have thought we was in another country the, the way it was looking. But again, I, I mentioned the water parks. I, I just can't stop from alluding to that because Dell City is, is the biggest and they have lots of places to go look at. It's gonna get there eventually. I don't know whether my wife's computer slow or my, my internet speed slow, but it, it's, a, it's a very large uh, indoor and outdoor water parks. Now, up here at Chippewa Falls is a brewery that's been in operation for 150 years. And it, Linen, Linen, Linen Kuva. Uh -huh. And uh, anyway, they have some very, very unique names on their beers. And when when they're very they're more than willing to let you taste them all but they've been been around 150 years and i was just taking pictures right and left <coughs> but <coughs> you can see there's a creamy dark and a honey weiss and and uh grapefruit and all sorts of flavors of combos of beers so is a great stop. The wine industry in Wisconsin is there. They have some unique grapes. We saw probably one of the fanciest wineries there. And uh, it, it, I wasn't expecting to see something quite like that. But uh, there it is. And anyway, it's, it's just a large facility and a nice tasting room, and beautiful. And then on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we're in a Morton built barn and uh, has cold country vines and wines. And uh, <laughs> anyway, from beautiful extreme to, hey, let's just get the job done. <laughs> but you did see my uh, one of those quotes they have hanging on the wall. Now, life's just too short to drink bad wine. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, one of those to share. Anyway, that's, that's ours. With Wisconsin, we headed out of there and went up to Minnesota. And when we get, uh, get along the shoreline there on our way into Canada, and, uh, there are so many waterfalls in that 72 mile drive in Minnesota that it was just amazing. My wife got tired of me stopping, I assure you, but I stopped many times. But uh, anyway, that's what, I, that's what I wanna know. If there's any questions, I'll answer them. Otherwise, we'll move on. To more pictures or we? Uh, no, that's the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah, we actually, there were a lot of, of things. Um, so I'll start at the most recent and kind of go back. Um, yeah, Ron said, yeah, he's definitely got to go there. He's not been to Wisconsin yet. Um, uh, oh, and, and Mary said, as far as the, the guy um, was not a hoarder because it wasn't just newspapers and 
and uh, magazines. It was, um, you know, not trash. It was he collected interesting things. Yeah, it, I can't tell you what all this had because, like, he bought the electric transformer and the switches. I couldn't tell you how many tons that it weighed. Once they got it there, they just built the building around it because they didn't exactly have a way to move. It's just, it is like, what a deal. Wow. Um, so Mary says in Sheboygan, um, stop at Manning's Irish Pub on North 15th Street. Keep that in mind. <laughs> The reason um, I would say that is because that was my brother's pub and now his son. Really? And music every weekend, usually Irish, but not by jazz and other things as well. It's a great local spot and it's in listed in all the, um, you know, places to eat in Wisconsin books. Great. Great. That would be the town I'm from, Sheboygan. Oh, okay. Um... Sarah, she says, there's a recent book, Loving Frank by Nancy Homan, Homan, that tells the whole story, including the fire and the murders that was grisly. Um, let's see, I think. Um, Carol Barron says, I was there in the early 80s and loved it. It was fantastic. And I think she was talking about that place with all the collections. Yeah. I think that's when that was. So um, oh, and Mary's brother owned shares in the Green Bay Packers and had season tickets. Well, that's pretty fun. Um, So Sandra says, my cousins rent one in New Jersey when they have a big backyard yard party. I'm not sure I know what. One of those, one of those, uh, one of those bathroom bathrooms. trailers. Oh, oh been really? In yeah. yeah. Okay. I actually have been in one of those at a, a Costco. They were like totally having to redo all the bathrooms in the store. I don't, I don't remember why, but they, they had several of those um, outside. And that was the first time I'd seen them with the air conditioning and the warm water at the sink. And yeah, that was. <laughs> the one she had also had a, wheel, a wheelchair access. Yeah, one. a ramp. And there was, you know, wow. Steps up, they just, Kind of drive it over to your driveway and plunk it down and then take it away when the party's over and then people don't have to go tramping through your house to go to the bathroom. Yes, actually, that's a great idea. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jack says, Wisconsin is known as America's dairy land. If New Hampshire state slogan is live free or die, is Wisconsin's eat cheese or die? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, um, when you saw all the motorcycles on the ferry, what brand of motorcycles were most common? Indian, Harley Davidson? Yeah, I was, I was thinking Harley Davidson probably yeah, was right. a predominant, but it, you know, they, I think they had some uh, Triumphs and Triumphs. Some Indians and some others, but uh, I was like, oh man, I've never seen some of these before. Yeah. Sounds fun. Um, okay. Is there anybody else? Oh, four new messages. Um, oh, that was the town from the TV show Laverne and Shirley. Sheboyne? She Mary, is that true? Milwaukee. They were from Milwaukee. But I'm oh, that's right. That's right. Yes. Museum. Um, Milwaukee has great art museum, breweries, the Dome Garden. The new Glarus is Swiss. 
Yes. Northern Wisconsin is full of lakes and woods with great fishing. North, Northern Wisconsin. Northern yeah. Wisconsin, yeah. We went to this GM plant or something. Yeah. Michigan. There are factories that you can visit too, yeah. Okay. There's another ferry that runs from Milwaukee to um, Muskegon, I think. Um, and, and actually, when my father was young and going to college, he played in a band on that ferry back and forth. <laughs> and so in the 20s, so I have pictures of him in his band. Oh, wow. But I haven't done the one at Manitowoc, but I, but I have written the one from, um, uh, uh, that goes to Milwaukee, from Milwaukee. And, and there is no shortage of places to eat cheese. Mm -hmm. Cheese curds, mm -hmm. cheese. Mm -hmm. I mean, we probably stopped at seven or eight different places. <laughs> the other food that Wisconsin is famous for is bratwurst. And the best place to get it is in Sheboygan. They used to have um, a festival there every year it's Johnsonville that makes that bratwurst the best kind, and you can get it now in, in your regular stores here. But when I used to go up there, before they started exporting it everywhere, I used to bring it back, you know, for my kids to, to have because <laughs> they, they liked eating it up there. So you smoke it very, very mm -hmm. uh, slowly on a, an outdoor cooker. You know, it's that kind. Uh, and you well, eat one it, of, one you of the things we did... On and you don't put all the 20 stuff on it. It's it's got a flavor of its own, and they eat them on a hard roll. It's called a hard roll, but it's more like French bread. But but it, the roll is round, made to hold one of those. Oh, like, interesting. The rolls are not really hard. They're they're more like yeah, they're, they're more like French bread or croissants or something like that. They're soft. Huh. Yeah. They had, to, they had to quit that that festival because uh, people were so unruly. It took them months to clean up after all of the partiers. Oh. As you drive into town on a weekend in summer, you can smell the cookers, you know, with the bratwurst cooking. <laughs> that that is the national food there. Let's see. Um, David wanted to know if uh, was this part of a trip through the Midwest, including several other states. Um, it was in 2019, what time of year? Yeah, it was in the fall. And we, we made, I think, 10 or 11 states in that trip. And we went to three different provinces in Canada. Oh, boy. And, uh, so it was, it was a big trip. We eventually made it to Idaho, but we went the long way. <laughs> <laughs> so um has anybody because we've been sent a big pastry around christmas called a kringle have you all been there from wisconsin i believe is that ring any bells no not really no not really well maybe it's just their marketing yeah. Well, no, were it, they are from Wisconsin because I have a niece who's lived up there and my sister-in-law had a brother and he would send them um, more than one every year. Well, and you kind of want them. more than one. They were really exactly. good. They were, they are delicious. Lots of butter in them. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, it was mainly settled by Germans and, and some Scandinavians but, and Dutch, but mainly Germans. And so any of that, you know, the name Kringle is a, a Christmas, uh, some kind of pastry. And sure. of course, my father's mother and parents were German or Prussian, uh, mm -hmm. stowaways uh, uh, to uh, U.S. when times got hard and settled Milwaukee. Actually, they were early settlers of Milwaukee. But, okay. Grandmother cooked all that German food, so it uh, wouldn't surprise me to, ha to hear something called a Kringle. Yeah. Well, um, Billy, thank you. That was, that there, was phenomenal. There are no mountains, there are no mountains in, <laughs> in Wisconsin, other than very low hills. I think there's a, one ski hill that's maybe a couple hundred feet, but, but no, no, nothing you would really call a mountain in Wisconsin. Okay, but they have waterfalls. Yeah, that, you know, you could have yeah. a uh -huh. 
You don't need a mountain for a waterfall. <laughs> well, um, so thank you very much. And I do think we'll move on to Sandra's um, strawberry freezer jam recipe. 